Good afternoon, everyone. Um, our next talk uh, is by Anneli Makaba and Paul Pego. Uh, it's going, they're good. This talk is going to be presented by Anele. It's a pre-recorded talk, but afterwards there's going to be time for a couple of questions. And if we run out of time, we can continue the conversation on Discord. Um, so here is Anele to talk, talk to us about building a self-watering plant using MicroPython on a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino. Yeah, good morning all. Oh, shucks, it's afternoon. Good afternoon all. I am Anila Makaba, a junior software engineer at Sarawo in Cape Town. So yeah, relax. I won't be talking about uh, the largest telescope that we're building in the Karoo, but I will be talking about how I built a self water and plant using, um, using MicroPython on a Wi-Fi enabled Arduino ESP8266 device. So coming from a computer science background, which is much more software aligned, uh, I guess uh, the content, the academic content that we were taught in university was much more software than hardware. So I did not get much time nor any time at all to play around with hardware. And I think for most of you would agree with me that it's, it is quite fun to see a piece of code doing something awesome in front of your eyes. So let me take you back on how my journey started uh, as a software engineer. In 2019, I joined Sarawo as an intern and my in-house colleague slash mentor briefed me to briefly told me about this mentorship program that Offerzen was running uh, project under the Offerzen Foundation banner, which is called Project Thrive. So in this program, that's how I got to meet uh, my mentor that was assigned to me in the program. So in one of our sessions with my mentor, he briefly told me about the Raspberry Pi Jam that he organizes with a couple of friends in Cape Town. So yeah, the curious me decided to attend the event and had fun. And that is when my mentor in the program uh, lent me his BBC Micropit device for me to play around with. So yeah, I did. I had fun with it. And I haven't taken it back. I feel ashamed that I have to share that with you. So yeah, I exhausted almost all of the projects that I could think of in the micro bit. So I asked myself, now that you've had a glimpse and taste of playing around with hardware, so what's next? Which brings me to my next slide. Uh, guess what? We see him poised in the slide, means that he's also involved somewhere somehow here so Mpo told me about an event that Offerzen was running so we seem to be attending a lot of events that Offerzen is running <laughs> so I signed up I waited in the waiting list uh, waited and waited and waited and finally got a response that I'll take part in the next session that that they will be running so yeah they sent me everything that I needed for the event and I got a free beer and chips too <laughs> So I attended the event. So in the event, uh, the coding was solely focused uh, on Arduino, which is a variant of C. And that wasn't much fun for me because I was accustomed to Python. Not that I'm saying it is a bad thing to learn a new language. But yeah, I guess if there was a Python version of how to do the, uh, the if there was a Python uh, version to do, to to perform the coding in the event, I, th I think that would be cooler. So yeah, here I was stuck uh, and I asked Mpo again whether, Mpo can we code this in Python? And guess what his answer was? He was like, yeah, Makaba, we can do it. So that's when I was, I got introduced to MicroPython or UPython. Uh, and a couple of months later, here we are presenting a talk in PyCon ZA21. So yeah, here's a brief overview of how my talk is structured. So I'll be going through these uh, headers. So what is Python? Uh, how does MicroPython differ with second Python? Uh, how does Arduino differ with uh, MicroPython? And why would you consider using uh, MicroPython over Arduino? And uh, MicroPython in microcontrollers and I'll throw in a little demo at the end 
on how basically uh, the simpler version of the self-watering plant looks like. So that would be how as well as the information insights. So yeah, what is Python or UPython? So Python, MicroPython is uh, a tiny open source programming language interpreter that runs on small development uh, boards like the PBC Microbit and the ESP8266, which I'm gonna be using later on in the demo. So with MicroPython, you can run uh, clean uh, and simple code to control hardware instead of having to use a complex low-level language like C or C++, which is what Arduino uses. So just like an Arduino board, MicroPython, just like Arduino, MicroPython is capable of doing anything you can imagine. You can control hardware and connected devices. You can read analog sensors, which is the output from the sensors that you've plugged into your board. Some boards have network and Wi-Fi support, like the ESP that I'm gonna be using later on. You can connect to the internet using it, or even configure it as a access point. And a whole lot, and a whole lot of other things that you can do with the board. So in short, MicroPython can do a lot. Uh, uh, don't underestimate it just because it's called MicroPython. It can do quite a lot and fun things and fun things as well. So beyond its ease of use, MicroPython has some unique features that set it apart from other embedded system. So it features an interactive help, which is the read over print loop. It has an extensive software library since it's based on Python 3. And, it, and it's extensible, it's open source. That's the nice thing about it. You can contribute to the growth of it as well. Uh, I'm sure if you do a Google search, you will see MicroPython or CircuitPython being used interchangeably. So in this slide, I'm just gonna briefly highlight uh, how CircuitPython differs uh, from uh, MicroPython. So Second Python is Adafruit's open source derivative of MicroPython. So it is used for educational purposes. So it adds support for easily getting started with electronics. And the core language of Second Python is the same for MicroPython. It slightly differs in APIs for accessing hardware components. So as it says, it is, it is a derivative of uh, MicroPython. So whatever you get in MicroPython, you get it in CircuitPython. Just that I think there are also other fruits has its own development boards that it has, which you could run CircuitPython on. So uh, in the slide, I'm going, just gonna briefly talk about the differences in, um, uh, well, a direct comparison of what Arduino is and how it differs to MicroPython. So, and why you would consider using MicroPython over Arduino? Well, there are a couple of important differences between Arduino and MicroPython. I think the first and key difference is that Arduino is an entire ecosystem. It features the Arduino IDE, the programming language itself, which is based on C. And also Arduino has its own devices like the R3 board, whilst MicroPython is just a programming language interpreter just a programming language interpreter, but you could do fun and cool things with it as well. And the second important difference is that MicroPython is interpreted instead of being compiled into code to the CPU that, that the CPU can run directly, just like what Arduino is. So a major advantage of this is that MicroPython code can be cleaner and simple compared to Arduino. And also it has, that also has a disadvantage the disadvantage being that there is less performance and this means that interpreting code could mean more memory usage whilst with Arduino you maximize your performance whilst you're saving memory. So having this direct comparison, uh, one of you in the audience might, might, might ask me, Anela, why would I consider using MicroPython when Arduino is a full package? I think that's a very good question. And I think with MicroPython, you can write clean and simple code instead of having to use complex low level languages like C. I think most of you would agree with me that Python is relatively 
an easy language to learn as compared to C. So yeah, that's that for the direct comparison. So in this slide, we're gonna be seeing uh, the use of MicroPython in uh, micro in microcontrollers and how it works and how uh, how you could use it in the MicroPython realm, how you could use in how you could use it in the web realm, and how you could add a third party extensions to your text editor. So in my example, I used Visual Studio Code. And what are the main scripts that you need to be running in your uh, in your in your device, which is your board, and how you would be able to manipulate files and run MicroPython code. So yeah, first and foremost, we'll start on how to flash uh, the firmware into your board. So what you need to do, you need to download the latest MicroPython firmware. So the links in the slides, uh, I think once the slides are shared with you, the links will be available, will be clickable. So yeah, first and foremost, you need to download the latest MicroPython firmware. After that, you need to put uh, uh, micro, my, the microcontroller into bootloader mode. So the bootloader mode process is board specific. So different ports have different processes of getting it into bootloader mode. So you would, you would ask me, why would I need to put the board in bootloader mode? So the I think the main reason, an important reason, is that bootloader mode will allow a swift flashing of the new firmware. So for this uh, exercise, which is flashing the firmware, we're going to be using the ESP tool. Well, there are other um, uh, there are other similar tools to it, but yeah, I chose ESP seems to be taking the cup because most of um, forums that you'd go to, they would be using the ESP tool. So you may ask me, what is the ESP tool? So it is a is a utility that is used to communicate with ROM, which is the run uh, uh, read only memory with the ROM bootloader in ESP8266 as well as ESP32 series chips. So this utility is also available via PIP or you can clone it uh, in the GitHub repo. So the utility you can use it, uh, I've used it on Windows as well as in Linux. I don't know about Macs, but I guess you, I think you can use it as well. Excuse me. So before you could flash the new firmware into the, after you've put your device into bootloader mode, I think you think that the next action is to actually flash the actual firmware. But instead of uh, doing that, you need, well, it is recommended that you erase the entire flash of the microcontroller before updating the new firmware. I think the reason is that many of these ports come embedded with Arduino inside. So you need to erase the flash before you could flash in the new MicroPython firmware. So uh, the ESP example looks like as follows. So uh, you provide the, the script, which is ESP tool to Pi, and then you provide the port which is what with the port that your board is connected using the uh, micro USB to USB cable, and then you provide the command erase flash. So after having done that, that's where now we need to act actually flash the actual uh, micro Python firmware. So as I mentioned previously, you could use the ESP tool to do this. So it takes in the port, the bound rate, Right, flash is the command, the flash, the, flash si the flash size, as well as the new uh, firmware. So one of you may ask me, what is um, the bound rate? So the bound rate uh, will allow a swift uh, flashing uh, through to, to the port. So uh, a higher bound rate will mean that you, are, you will be compromising speed and a stability so it's better that you always use the recommended bound rate which is i think it's 115 200 if i'm not mistaken we'll we'll, we'll see it when we are accessing uh, the when we're using picocom which is another utility for that you could use to access your help so help using help in micropython uh, using micro using micropython in help prompt so what you will need, you will need a uh, terminal emulator program like Terra Tem 
or Picocom that I just mentioned for Linux. So Picocom takes in the port as well as the pound rate. So as you can see from the example, they've used the 115200 that I just mentioned previously. Or if you don't want to use that uh, RELP, you could use the web RELP, which is a prompt via uh, Wi-Fi. So for the web RELP, you need to access that. Uh, the, the web RELP client is hosted at that link, so you need to access it via that link. So first and foremost, you need to configure your microcontroller as an AP before connecting to the uh, web help to access web help you need to connect computer to the microcontrollers ap so if i just quickly come here you would see that uh, the micro python uh, ap is being listed in the available it's not packed in let me just quickly plug it in and you will see that it will pop up as uh, an available access point it's not yet configured to be used as an access point so if i connect to it right now let's just see there it is if i connect to it to if i connect to it right now i won't be able to be to connect to the internet so yeah that's that uh so if you want to use uh, uh an extension an extension to your text editor I would advise that you download the MicroPython IDE. If you're using Visual Studio Code, I don't know about other uh, text editors, but I used Visual Studio Code to test this. So you download the MicroPython IDE extension. So you just launch the Visual Studio Code code quick open and paste the command that I've uh, paste that I've highlighted there below. So the requirements of this extension, you need to have Ampy installed as well as Rshell. Ampy is a utility that allows you to interact with uh, the file system created on the chip, and Rshell is just the remote shell that is running on the mic. Uh, is the remote shell for MicroPython that will be running on the on the board. So what does this IDE features? So it features uh, file management. You can run and stop scripts on the board and you can flash the new firmware so if you don't want to go through all of this exercise well you would need to download the firmware of course but if you don't want to go through all of these processes uh, this extension will allow you to do that so as a way they mentioned there is another um, extension worth exploring on vs code which is pi maker without an a without an e sorry uh, extension but it will roughly allow you to do the same uh, as the mentioned things above so you could uh, manage projects run a stop script and flash um, new firmware so coming to the main scripts that MicroPython has uh, there are two main scripts that MicroPython well the board if you want to flash into the board you could have you can a have any other script but it is advisable it is advisable to have at least one of these two scripts. So there's the boot.py script that runs when the board boots up or wakes up from sleep. And this should contain low level code that sets up the board. So defining your sensors, your pumps, and all other hardware that is connected to the board should be defined in the boot.py script. And then there is the main.py so if it exists it runs boot.py and should contain any script any main script that needs to run when the board is powered up or reset so yeah manipulating files and running micro, micro python code mp is a utility that allows you to interact with the file system created on the chip i just mentioned in the previous slides so we'll use this uh, utility to manipulate files and run micro python code well, there are other utilities you could use, but I chose this one. It, it's ease of use. It's very simple to use. So it is a simple cross-platform command line tool that offers enough functionality without being too complex. As I said, it's easy to use. There are other alternatives like the R shell for manipulating files and more on a microcontroller. So the next slide is just a screenshot of um, how the usage of MP. So you'd see that you can retrieve a file that would list the file's contents. So if you say get put.py, it would list whatever code that is in the put.py file. You can list the file contents, you can make directories, you can put a file which is like copying and pasting 
over to the board you can reset your board you can remove a file which is deleting the file the file from the board or you can remove the directory and all its child children from the board that means that if you remove that directory, everything that is linked to it is removed or you can run a script so i'll be when i'm demoing later on you will see how i'll be using this utility yeah fun time self-watering plant so yeah this is uh what you will need for your self-watering plant you will need a board moisture sensor a micro usb to usb cable a water pump jump wires connectors a transistor as well as a port and a plant you will need soil too and water but yeah so how you want to set up your esp board which is flashing the firmware previous lights as mentioned in the previous lights uh, i've also included the watering system diagram i will show how to calibrate the moisture sensor set up the moisture sensor uh, calibrate the moisture sensor set up the water pump uh, and group everything together so this is how the watering system diagram looks like so um this is your sensor your water pump the actual board and your transistor so just a second so calibrating the water sensor i will throw in a clip of how i am when i'm doing the actual demo the, the demo or on uh, on the terminal of how uh, well when i'm doing the demo and then how the the commands interact with the plant system so i'll throw in a clip uh, later on so what you need to do you need to connect the sensor to the board as shown in this previous slide so check the above diagram where it would need to be connected to the board and also keep note of where it is connected because the pins are actually vital when you're defining the, the sensor in the code you will see later on uh, so you dip the sensor in a bowl of water take that reading and then you remove and wipe the sensor completely dry and take that reading so the sensor has both analog and a digital output but for our for our exercise we're going to be using the digital the analog converted yeah analog digital converted uh, values so yeah so this is how the water pump looks like the water pump is submissible so it sucks in water from this other end and then pumps it out through this little outlet so my first time uh, experiencing this I, I asked myself wouldn't this um, uh, maybe fry the water pump since it has wires only to find out that no you can actually submerge it in water so that it's able to suck the water in and pump it out through the outlet so it needs to be connected to the board with the transistor in order to switch it on and off we'll see how to do that how to switch it on and off uh, i've already wired everything up so i did not want to go through the exercise of wiring everything from scratch so grouping everything together uh I'll, what i would want is that the system run 24 hours and every 15 minutes it checks the sensors in the following order and acts accordingly so i would want to average the last readings not just base the water ring on a single reading and get the percentage of it which will be used for data or, or visualization if i may put it like that if the soil humidity is less than 70 percent in the pot plant you activate the pump which is turned on for three seconds uh and you may ask me why three seconds three seconds is not a time suck value because i see i saw that if you go over three seconds you might end up uh, over watering your plant which might cause it to die so let me just quickly let me just quickly do a demo for you uh, let me just quickly do a demo for you uh, so we are already connected to the uh emulator so we've accessed our micro python route so what i wanted to i want to show you how we could be able to connect to the internet 
uh, using the Wi-Fi station. So first and foremost, we need to import machine. Machine. I will be showing you how to connect to the internet, how to set up your sensor, how to how to um, how to set up your sensor, how to turn on your water pump on and off. So you need to import machine, port network. Right. Right. So you need to define the network station. So this will be defining the network so that you'll be able to to connect to my okay first and foremost sorry I've already copied over the secrets file to my to my board so I won't I don't want to show you my Wi-Fi passwords so what we need to do we need to open secrets secrets uh to jason jason as f right after that we need to say secrets yeah secrets is equal to jason load and then load f and that's that Oh, okay, we need to import JSON. Import JSON. Right. So, Wi-Fi SSID is equals to secrets. And you have here. Excuse me, and then you have SSID. Right, and then we have the pass, which is equals to secrets. Secrets, then Wi Fi config again, and then we have the SSID. SSID. Oh, pass, no, it's pass. start here this works and then pass honest oh, how is this not working okay maybe it's Wi-Fi password or something let's quickly check this file connected yeah we, we've got our secrets I'm sure you've seen my Wi-Fi password already but it's not a big deal so network station define our network station as opposed to network dot wireless LAN into network Our network station is active. No oh, man, it's not productive. It's false. So, what you need to do? We need to connect. So, uh, we need to turn it on. Net station. So it's active now. So if we check again, then it's active, right? So let's check net station. 
root connected is connected right it's false so let's connect connect uh, we provide the SSID password right so if we check this it will still be false it's false it's true now right so let's check which network it's connected to so to do that you need to do net dot station dot config station to config man it's next trick but uh, so in order to check or well, let's just check quickly okay this is the Vodafone network station would see that this is the config it's connected to right uh, that's that for the network uh, let's see how to define now our our connected pump as well as sensor so we've imported import machine again machine we need to import uh, from machine we need to import from machine import um, ADC and this is the analog digital conversion um, uh, library uh, machine and then we pin and then pin this will be able well we'll be able to access uh, the pins that are in the board and see what is connected to it right you remember when I said that keep in mind of whatever wire is connected uh, to what pin right so the water sensor sensor is uh, connected to pin pin 14 yes is equals to pin 14 and the water sensor is the input so we need to define it as in right it will be reading values into the board and the pump is defined at pin 12 And then this is the output, right? Right. So we need to water sensor dot uh, the digital converted uh, value now because we need to, to read it back as the analog digital converted value. So we use the ADC, then zero for that. And now let's get start cracking so I'll just show you how to how to um, how to yes how to calibrate your sensor so if we say water sensor uh, dot read right we see that the water sensor it's outside well not completely dry but it's dry right now let's dip it in to the water and read back the value. See that it's four five four eight. Remove the sensor, read back the value. It's ten twenty four again. So that is that is how you will um, that is how you will uh, calibrate your sensor and keep those values in mind in your config somewhere. So, and then let's see how to power up your water pump. So if you see already, if you get, uh, see that there is nothing in this bottle. So we're gonna be pumping the water from this nice chicken livers um, container. So if you say pump.on, we should see the pump, pumping water, pump.on. 
We should see the pump pumping water from uh, the container to the bottle. Right, you see there is the water coming from in. And you see how the three seconds is vital because you would want to set off over, you would want to avoid uh, overpowering your, your plant. So that is that for the mini demo. So if I quickly exit this and show you the code that I have. Okay. So yeah, as I said, we'll group everything together. I have the script uh, that I have uh, that is currently running in my ESP board. So, oh yeah, let me just also do this mini demo for you. So I need to desktop, self-watering plant, right, ls. We have the secrets as well as the utility. Uh, we have the boot pie, utilities as well as the secrets. So this is where, this is the script that contains most of the code as you can see from the background. So let's use MP to <coughs> let's use MP to to access the script to access the MicroPython board. So let's list of let's list uh, what is available in the board. We can see that it's only secrets that is available in the board. So yeah, let's put the boot.py file right. We we'll put it in the board and let's run it now. Right. Uh, my water, I did water it yesterday using the code, so it's wet now, so you won't be seeing any watering happening. So if we run, we say mp run boot file. So you can see network config that is connected to that network. Current moisture is that. Uh, this is yeah so you can see that the script is working so we stop that and then now <coughs> let me show you how to remove that uh, put dot pile so you just provide remove and then if we list again we'll see that it's only oh let me put it back and then list we'll see that you have two files in the board less files okay cool so that concludes the demo for now let's go back to the presentation I hope I'm not running over time so yeah uh, in order to visualize your, your data there are a couple of uh, uh, APIs you could use you could use UV dots you could use slack so every time that the what the plant is watering itself it sends a slack message to you so Mpo actually made a very nice uh, blog post about this you can click on the link and go and see and read up for yourself. So you could also use a Blink, which is an Android app, the Slack API, UBDOS that I just previously showed, as well as the Python Telegram port uh, for your visual insights. So last but not least, I would like to give a special thanks to Umpo. So he really, really helped me with this presentation and I don't think that if it wasn't for him I'll be having this skill or knowledge that I currently uh, possess and also an honorable shout out to Offerzen I think it's through one of their programs well most of their programs that I was able to do this project and yeah you can follow me on Twitter as well as GitHub you can you will see that my GitHub is not that um, uh, glamorous as in pause and not that I often tweet, but uh, yeah, a follow would be nice. And no, this was not an offer than sponsor talk, but thank you for listening in. So yeah, any questions? I'll be gladly taking questions. If I can't answer you, I have my mentor on standby to answer you. <laughs> Just kidding. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much, Nella. That was great. Um, we have time for a very small number of talks, uh, um, questions. Um, so we have a, an observation rather than a question from Simon, who says, sounds like you've had an incredible start to your Python journey and had a lot of fun along the way. Um, yeah. we, have, we have two questions over here so far. We have a question from Jade, who's asking if the plugin is only available for VS Code and if it's available on Atom or Sublime. 
Um, well, the the one that I mentioned in this slide, that I think it's only available for VS Code. Uh, well, I'm not sure about the other one, which is PyMaker, whether it's available for other uh, IDEs. But it's uh, well for someone that uses a different IDE apart from VS Code. It's I think they would do. It would be nice to do your own research because uh, I'm only using VS Code, so that's why my um, that's why my presentation was solely focused on VS Code. So yeah. Cool. Um, and Bruce Mary asks, uh, did you have any problems with oscillation between too wet and too dry? The thing was that uh, how this sensor works, um, it uh, it is measuring. Let me just quickly show the sensor for that answer for Bruce. So how this sensor works, I think it it's measuring. Uh, where is this now? Oh, okay. So it's measuring the moisture between these two other ends. You would find that if the other end is too wet and the other end maybe it's semi-dry, you'd get an oscillating value. So that is why I opted to, uh, instead of use one value as the watering level, I would take maybe 10 readings and average them out before I could water the plant. So yeah. Cool. Um, Dirk asks, what is the next project? Hmm. Uh, maybe if you would uh, give me that Arduino board, Dirk, then I would find out what's the next project. <laughs> <laughs> um, Rudy asks, uh, what is the biggest problem you had when making this? I actually, uh, I coded this back in March uh, and had my water, uh, well, I had my plant die because there wasn't sufficient power being provided to the board. So the board is currently plugged into my PC. So whenever I go away, I would have to take my PC with. So that leaves uh, the watering system not functioning. So I think the biggest uh, problem that I faced was having um, sufficient power running to the board without uh, worrying that the power would fry it out. So I think I managed to get a solution for that using this uh, think it's a it's a power bank if you use a power bank it should be sufficient enough to power up the board so that's one problem and the other one um it, it's uh it's it, it's dependencies uh on on like on as i mentioned in visual studio code you'd see that i coded my project in visual studio code but i wasn't running it using visual studio code so there were a lot of dependencies in order to get that uh, extension working. So apart from those two things, it's been a cool and fun project to work on. So yeah. Cool. Uh, we have time for one more question, I think. Um, Bongani is asking, can this project be expanded to a farm irrigation system? What's your take? Well, not on this scale, <laughs> not with these uh, sensors, but maybe if you had uh, proper hardware, you you could expand it to a farming uh, to to that scale, but not with this hardware that I currently have. This is for a home, well, a home or slash office setup, so that you could use whenever you're not around. You'd ensure that your plants are getting watered. But for a farm, uh, yeah, I'd have to maybe research about the proper hardware to use. So yeah. Awesome. And a final observation um, from Julian, who says, thanks, Anela, my favorite talk so far. And I agree. It's pretty thanks. great. Um, so thanks, thanks, thank thanks you again. Um, and the channel on Discord is still open. So if anyone has more observations, comments, questions, then please follow up there. Uh, thank you very much again. Um, and yeah. thank you for being with thank us. Thank you for hosting me. And by the way, this was my first talk ever. So you can, I'm anxious, although this is a pre-recorded talk, but I was anxious all throughout the presentation. I don't know why. So I, I'm glad that you guys enjoyed it. So yeah, thanks. Great.